This is Rago. I'm back with Mind Rolling, and I'm back with, uh, we were just talking, Allison and Alex Gray, and I was saying, so happy to have you, and it's been so long coming, really. So thank you, you guys. Thank and you how for you doing? inviting us. Oh, we're great. We're good. We're, we're remarkably uh, well. What do you think, Alex? Uh, well, considering the uh, state our uh, current state is in, uh, I think that we, we feel like we're living in an oasis uh, in a, mm. in a uh, very tempestuous time. And uh, so Cosm has been a, a place of uh, retreat for the uh, folks who are still trying to uh, keep our organization going. And so uh, we've been very careful. And uh, But it's a busy hive. It's a hive mm. of, uh, of people who work on um, sustaining Cosm. You know, we have many, many outreaches that we do uh, but we don't have guests. Mm. That's what we don't have or yeah, visitors. Well. So. Which is something that we used to have for oh. many, many years, yeah. you know, of course, prior to March 13th. So, Every weekend um, events and sometimes weekdays, workshops all the time, you know. We were, you know, very, very, uh, like a moderately busy small hive of, you know, a dining hall that comfortably serves 50, you know, although oh. it can be more. Mm. We have had, as, you know, more, many more than that, but mm. uh, without the tables too. And lots of, lots of musicians and lots of uh, artists and art, art mm. retreats and art consultations and everything, you know, that happens around Tense. guests ended. Mm. In the middle of March, March 13th, we yes, closed as day. an organization. We all have etched. Yeah. Yes, but indeed. luckily and fortunately, we were ready to spring into action to start doing what you've been doing for a long, long time, which is podcasting. Mm. So we were able to mm. reach out to a lot more people and mm -hmm. getting better at it. And uh, we're putting out like uh, a new uh, program every week, pretty much. We do the full oh, moons. Wow. That's and the great. New I'm, moons. Of course, I know. Yeah, yeah. that's really And then we wonderful. have interviews and things like that. So. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, of course, the one of the things that we must mention to everybody that uh, Allison and Alex uh, have a deep connection to Ram Dass and uh, Alex. Uh, Actually, it's not that long ago, a number of years ago, within maybe five years, did this uh, extraordinary painting of Ramdas. And uh, I don't know who had this. Did it get auctioned off at, at the No, no. Retreat? It said right now uh, it is, uh, it was really uh, to us, there's every, uh, every bit of it. Uh, it uh, seems like Maharaji had a hand in it, I have mm -hmm. to say. So fingerprints are all over it. And because mm -hmm. uh, 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 Vishnu Das uh, had been reaching out to uh, us over the years that, um, and, and many years ago, uh, we were uh, invited to spend a little time with someone we considered uh, our guru, really, you know, in a in a very deep, uh, we're so deeply connected. It's you know, it goes back decades. Okay, so at, at so, any rate. so if it weren't for Maharaji, yeah, we wouldn't even know each other. That's the truth. Uh -huh. That's the truth of it. And so, Ma, so Maharaji is at the at the at the helm of of it all, really. And and the and the commission that you got though was to create a portrait of Ramdas for the uh, what was it? Well, it the might towels. be the Hanuman, the Hanuman uh, Temple. It, its eventual it's. destination may be there. Uh, if uh, they didn't want it at the time that uh, Ramdas was going to be there, because uh, it would be a kind of a distraction, you know. And mm. oh, uh -huh, so let's yeah. celebrate, uh, you know, because he was there to celebrate uh, uh, you know, Maharaji and the yeah. Hanuman. Well, the uh, new temple. temple, yeah, the new Hanuman Temple. And so, yeah. and so, it may find a home there. Uh, mm. Stephanie Schwindenheimer uh, uh, 
was gracious enough to uh, to, fund uh, to, to fund it, to commission yeah. it, mm. and uh, have it come into being. And and then we were uh, incredibly fortunate. Enough, I, was it 2018? It was uh, it was recently, you know, that we flew out there with the painting, and right. uh, and had Ramdas look at it, crit it, get, and uh, he he was pretty uh, straightforward in his in his assessment of of certain things, and really advised me on how to improve it. But he was willing and could see that it was. I guess going in the right direction and mm. knew well, I would he, try. He thought uh, he felt that the, the portrait of his mother needed some needed some more work, and so he could provide <laughs> maybe more, uh, you know, more doc. I mean, what do you call it? I examples, more reference material. And Alex did shoot some other pictures for reference material. He wanted to change a book. He mm. wanted to because I had put down a, a different uh, book of his, and he said. Now let's make it the like the 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 one that just came out walking prime, walking each other each home. other home yeah. you know and so I thought yeah good you know it it has a, a nice mm. display there and so and uh, and he was not at all happy with the portrayal of Maharaji which I had just sketched in to begin it you know I thought I should work on his face but he was mostly concerned with what his yeah. master looked like yeah. and you know oh my god why mm. didn't I think of that so I put a lot of work and love mm. into that and can we, hey, you guys can we can we show uh, uh, on the, where we have the show notes put up uh, please the painting? do. Please, Absolutely. of course, do. Please. We yeah. don't. We can't handily, handily and available get it up on the screen for you, which would have been nice. You know, right, future right. thinking. We but yeah, please but that, do. That's okay. Everyone, put it up. you all get a chance to see it. And yeah, we, and we get the show incredible. notes in. We talk about uh, all the different things that uh, Allison and Alex are doing. Uh, and uh, linking up to the podcast, so everything will be there for you, everybody. So I just so, wanted to uh, say. Uh, that, uh, oh no! Go go ahead, Raggy. What were you going to no, say? No, no, no. I was just because this uh, is, of course, it's early January. This is one of the first podcasts in January that I'm doing. I do them every week. You do. But um, this is the fiftieth anniversary of Be Here Now. Yes. This year. Yes. Ah! Well, it's so, our, it's the inroad. It's the funnel for so many people, you know. And I know that because that's what I, was my inroad. Um, I got to get that story. Well, I, actually, I, I, from I have both to say, that, I was going to say about what Alex was saying, though, that it really that wasn't the first time that we went to see Ram Dass in Maui. And, and that was a very, very important journey in our last time uh, being with him. And, um, and, and we did make it there. And I wanted to say that uh, the day my mother died, I was getting off a plane in Maui. And the ride that was picking us up was taking us directly to Ramdas. And, my, oh, wow. and I got a call from the social worker at my mother's nursing home that she had died. And I just couldn't believe, you know, the poignancy of that. I couldn't have been there with her because she lived far away from me and I had just been with her and uh, as soon as I could. But then I had this journey and we were together and, this, and they called and we were in an airport and then we were at Ramdas. And we were with Ramdas when my mother died and we cried together. He cried too. It was so good of him. He has been a part of our, well, before that though, we first uh, had, you know, a personal meeting with Ram Dass at, where he blessed our daughter when she was born. She was only a few months old. And we went to a party at the Bergens in New York, and he was there. And we asked him if he would bless our daughter, Zena, who is now a grown-up, of course. And, um, and he did. So that, it was almost like he appeared at such poignant moments in our mm. life. And, and the, the, the meeting that, well, I, I don't need to tell you. I do, should I tell you how I first encountered Ramdas? Or should I We're wait? talking, yeah, so that's why I brought Be Here Now up, because I know about that. Oh, uh, well, everyone, including me, read Be Here Now in 1971. It was a, a tremendous, tremendous hit. And uh, it changed my work. And uh, the way I did my work, I, I, I did years of Stanford art, you know, and, and uh, always loved that. And um, so I, 
I, uh, I, the book really changed me, but the thing that it really uh, recommended that I, that I uh, took on was to try doing LSD, and he didn't say to do this. It was, a, it was a recommendation that came through reading the book, to go into a dark room and try doing LSD in a way I had not tried in the three years I had been journeying, like constantly, repeatedly, many times, in many different settings, in all kinds of fun ways, bicycle rides and climbing Rockies and all kinds of crazy things. Try going into a dark room, quiet, spiritual, peaceful music, and just go within. And I did, in my little tiny 9 by 12 foot room in Cambridge, and that's where I saw God. I had been a Jewish politico, I don't know, what, uh, non-believer, kind of, you know. Um, and uh, God was evident. So God became known to me in the form of secret writing. And it was the way that the Spirit spoke to me, was through this secret writing. And the secret writing was universal, so it wasn't translatable. It was like bab, you know, like you couldn't, it had no association with sound. It was all sound. It was all language. And it was the word of the divine. Mm. And that's the way spirit came to me in my Jewishness. It just came to me through writing. And, uh, but it wasn't Hebrew, and it wasn't Arabic, and it wasn't any language because that would pejoratize it for somebody. So it was basically, you know, Free of translation, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and you're laughing. Why are you laughing? Pejoratize. I just love Pejoratize, that word. Yeah. <laughs> well, people yeah. would see it as, oh, uh, what I think of Israel, and oh, what I think yeah. of the Arabs, yeah. and you know, I didn't want any of that laid on it when I when I tried to portray it in my art. What I saw was universal, and I wanted to portray that. So anyway. Mm -hmm. um, it changed my life. I stopped being very, you know, politically active, frankly, and I went to uh, study meditation with uh, the Yogi Bhajan community in Provincetown, where I got initiated into Yogi Bhajan. I mean, it was like I was I was nineteen. I was like, you know, anything, just like you know, I wanted mm -hmm. to learn to meditate, and um, that's where my meditation journey began. And uh, I did not. Um, well, then. Alex came into my life, like, what, three years later, three, three years later, and, uh, wow. was, and was tripping in, in my apartment at my party. I gave a party. I always gave parties, and Alex came. He was a classmate of mine. Hadn't talked very many times, but he was weird, <laughs> super weird. <laughs> and I invited him, but he was working for... Um, the guy I was going out with. He was basically his studio assistant. I was, I was dating the professor in our class. So, but he came to my party and tripped for the first time in my apartment wow. and, had a, and saw God the first time. Didn't take a, didn't take a lot for you. You no. just sat there in my apartment. Oh, wow. Crazies going on I think all that, around you. I think that the, uh, for me, um, you know, uh, at that juncture, because Allison had been open to the idea of a spiritual uh, reality uh, that was accessible through the psychedelic experience, uh, when I had my breakthrough in her apartment, uh, we had found a kind of match because we could you know, you, you got to be careful who you're talking to about stuff like that, as most people who trip or do anything spiritual or what they consider woo-woo or what other people consider uh, fringe activities that they don't want to be associated with. You know, uh, for myself, I was suicidally depressed and uh, ready to end my life anyway, so... This was a kind of a uh, what the hell last resort kind of uh, thing that my professor, God bless him, offered me. You know, he could probably well see what a mess I was and that mm -hmm. uh, if uh, I needed a little uh, spiritual shock treatment, 
you know, to mm. let, let, let me know God was real and let me know that uh, the, the whole infinite within was well worth exploring. No, don't give up now, you've barely begun. You know, I was 21. So mm. uh, that turned my life around and thank God I met God in the flesh in the very <laughs> same room and uh, we well, decided as, as soon to- as you said to me, about seeing God. I mean, I realized how, you know, you, you didn't really talk about it to people in those days. It was actually very, uh, like, it, you know, you're going to you no know, school. You don't want them to know that you're, I don't know, you don't want to be associated with it. So to be able to talk to somebody about our spiritual, you know, connectedness with God that I, you know, I didn't have, I really didn't tell anybody about that. There was nobody you could talk about spirituality. I didn't have anybody. I was coming from not having anybody that uh, I could speak to about well, those things. Well, maybe you had a boyfriend or two that uh, you felt like not you could spiritual. connect with. Not spiritual. Not <laughs> spiritual. I needed, uh, I really was You two was were your, the, you. your original satsang. The two of you. Mm. It only takes two. Yeah. And that's what you did. And, you know, a lot of us did the exact same thing. Is that right? And isn't it? And I know your, uh, Be Here Now came into your life, Alex, at that same time, I think, yeah. uh, is, yep. is what I was told. But uh, uh, it, Well, I think that it, it gave us also an appreciation for something handmade. And that the... Uh, I had been following Richard Alpert. Uh, already, you know, from when I was a 12-year-old and uh, writing a report on LSD because he wrote the book on it. And uh, the the different kinds of uh, literature that was uh, being put out uh, he was he was all over uh, that. So I I was familiar with that, and then the idea of becoming a, uh, uh, a kind of, uh, having the spiritual um, a connection with an ancient uh, spiritual tradition, you know, that was beyond the tradition of his ancestry, you know. Of course, Judaism is old and venerable, and I'm, uh, I know a few, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, uh, but but to take on the uh, the mantle, so to speak, of uh, of uh, Guhuri, that was a very uh, um, I I think uh, inevitable, but also a, a frightening uh, vortex, you know, uh, that was happening in the you know, uh, uh, 60s and uh, 70s and things like that, that that uh, I think Ram Dass is the prime example of how things could go right uh, mm-hmm. uh, with all it. of these uh, conditions that, you know, certainly there's been many cautions around uh, gurus and devotees and things, but here we have an example of someone who made a pure connection with a powerful master who was a, a magical ge- spiritual genius of love and uh, that he was forever the, uh, indebted to and in love with and a spiritual emissary of, because all of those forces were connected and it, it's just an extraordinary outpouring. You look at his life and what he did was able to put out in terms of uh, personally accessed wisdom, not repeats of prayers heard before. Although that'll come with, as, you know, you want to go deeper, I'll, I'll, go, I'll take you there too. Mm-hmm. But I'll yeah. tell you what is real and then, you know, uh, and how that connects with the mystic tradition that runs through all the traditions. We, we loved his interfaith uh, rootedness. Can I, can I say one more thing that he did for me that, that I always remember is on my list? Mm. He gave me my mantra. Because even though I was, in, in, inter, I was actually uh, initiated by Yogi Bhajan himself, which I, I had no idea what was going on, and here he was <laughs> becoming such a great guru for so many people. And 
bringing Kundalini to the to the West and everything. But I didn't stay with that group. I uh, and and one day when we were um, together, he was giving out a mantra to everybody, and uh, the I am loving awareness mantra became my mantra. Mm. I gave up the Hindu. I just didn't feel that, um, or the Sanskrit or whatever it was, I just didn't feel that being Jewish, I really felt that I'm Jewish. And so, I mean, you can be everything, and I think that's mm. fine. But uh, I am loving awareness. That is just so meaningful to me. That'll do, right? That'll well, do. Well, I am is everything bringing in to yourself and who you are. So whenever mm. I do it, I think about the I am is who I am. And then the loving awareness is what I put out mm. into the world. And to me, that just made the best possible sense. And I love English because I speak in, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I want to like speak my own language and pray in my own language. Mm -hmm. I do yeah. use I'm a little the exact Hebrew opposite. here and there. Really? You like to use all uh, the Hindu and it's all foreign. I know a uh, lot of people all, like that. Absolutely, yeah. Hebrew, Sanskrit. I uh, love yeah. those too. No, yeah. I love it yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. So isn't it great though when you look back, the, the reality of a, of a psychedelic trip and be here now, do you, do you, I know you know this even though we haven't really talked before, but every week there are people writing and saying, I just took some acid and read Be Here Now. Uh, where do I get more Ramdas? You know, that kind still, of a thing. Can still, you imagine from the day, from uh, these days that you're speaking of, back in time, well, the exact same thing? It's millions of people that have been, uh, that have opened their minds and hearts you know, to, I think, the love tribe, the mystic love tribe that ha it reemerges in every generation and that uh, the avatars of which are called forth like Ramdas, you know? It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. particular in our generation, though, because of the, the proliferation of LSD uh, and then mushrooms and stuff, stuff like that. Because when people have those experiences, then they want to share them. They just mm. want to share them. And yep. they turn out to be a great many of them mm. mystical or spiritual uh, oriented experiences. So those people mm. want to gather together in groups and they want to meet with each other and talk about it, read about it, do about it, because it's so uplifting. It's upwardly spiraling. Mm. It makes your life better. So you, you know that it's doing good. So well, you, you know what the original Jewish man said, where two or more are gathered in my name? Yeah. There we are. There we are. Oh, and there yeah. are the we. Way, I mean, really, don't have to be in a big group, believe me, not us. No. No. And, I recommend uh, a, I recommend around a part Maharaji, of back in the day when Ram Dass went back, and then I went back with him with Krishnas and others you know, mm -hmm. uh, it was all about Christ. And we kept wondering, what are these Jewish people here? It's a bunch of them we were. Why, uh, I, you know, and uh, we never ever found that out except we think that in the undivided there is only one. And in this case, even if you get down to the Jews and Christians at all, what are we talking about here? So, uh, yeah, so that's always been a funny thing. Now, a oh, Alex, yeah. I, no, I, I love it when there's this optical delusion, you know, about, oh, Buddha. Or Jesus, I don't know which one. They're so good, you know. And so, uh, and and it was kind of like, ho ho, wait, Sonny, if if you don't understand that we're the same, then you're not. Re you don't know who we mm -hmm. are. Well, but it really resonated with me the the whole feeling of you know a God is one. I don't know if you grew up in the Jewish tradition, but I yes, did. Yes, yes. And God is yep. one. God is definitely one. And so, so the seeing of God really made complete sense to me. It is one. It isn't, and it doesn't have a face, and it doesn't have a gender. The gender thing is really troubling for women because it it it, it sets up. Well, first of all, it's dual. And you know, if you know anything about non-dual and dual, well, you'd want to be non-dual. I mean, you want to go for the one. See, the one is where it was at when I saw God. Everything was one, and everybody's God was the same God. That's what it was. They have different names. They call it different things, mm. but it is one. Yep. So, yep. so that so. really resonated with my Jewishness, and it it it, it felt just fine to me then. I just, I completely That's what we it. were given every day. He would point his finger, Neem Karoli Baba, 
sub X. There's one, all one. All one. There's wow. only one. There's all only one. one. Now, Alex, the uh, when you you said something that triggered something in me, the shock treatment you called it, that acid trip, right? And you didn't mention, of course, your work. You were working in a morgue at the time uh, that or came around later, that time. Actually, what? Yeah, I I I worked uh, I, I worked at a uh, medical school uh, for years, but after my first uh, LSD experience, and, we were together by then. Yeah, and uh. Uh, and I I did not ever go to work tripping. Uh, but I was experimenting uh, with my consciousness around that time. Around that, yeah. Because, uh, well, yeah. What, what it triggered uh, for me was uh, shock treatment. And uh, so uh, people who listen to Mind Rolling have heard this before, but you've maybe not, not heard this before. My father, who was uh, in his 50s, you know, we were all in early 20s when we went over, and my father wanted to come over and visit my brother and I, and gee, I, I'd like to see how you're doing. And I, I had a not a good relationship with my father, and I was like, oh, Jesus, what's this going to be like? Anyhow, he got over there. He, he's, he's like right out of Mad Men, by the way. Toupee, advertising game, you know, the whole, the furniture, the Danish furniture, all of it, right? So he gets there, and he sits down, we were around Neem Karoli Baba, me and my brother and my future wife and one other woman. And as soon as my father sits down, he tells him everything that happened from the moment he left the airport in Montreal to get to India, who was on the plane. I mean, nobody could even, you know, know this. so my, my father, he got in shock a little bit. And then he turned to me and it was just a bunch, of, he would just play with us. You, uh, you love your father because he gives you money, right? <laughs> like well I <laughs> and then he says did you give him the medicine and he's right in front of him everybody's sitting there and I go yeah no he had a cold I, I gave him an aspirin yeah he said nice. <laughs> the yogi medicine that Ram Dass gave me I went acid <laughs> my 50 odd year old father who'd never done anything and then my father goes LSD <laughs> And he turns to me and goes, Maharaji, take care of your father. And meet me in two weeks in some other place in Allahabad. And do you know, of course, we went to Benares. And we went and lived on a houseboat near the burning gods where for you know, thousands of years, 24-7 bodies. And my father, he was a World War II bomber pilot. He thought he wasn't afraid to die. That's how disconnected he was. And so I, somebody gave me a hit of acid walking down the streets in Benares. He took it. I couldn't believe that. And we sat around and watched, wonder what's going to happen here. And then we went through the streets of Benares. It's death. One thing out of it. He had a total death trip. And then we went back to see Maharaj, who never said a word about the trip, and just said, oh, Ganji's water's pure, right? Yeah, all right, Maharaji. And then he told my father, uh, my father had a horse farm, and he told him exactly what happened to a particular horse that my father saved from euthanasia and treated it, like getting up every few hours at night and treating this horse. It was a huge deal for him. And when Maharaji rattled that whole thing off, my father, boom, that was it. Shock treatment, big time. Other, and the rest of our lives, we had a, an intact family, whereas we didn't before. Wow, so, it changed him. Yeah. It really changed him. I wish changed I wish uh, we could have had that experience with our parents. It's we did actually do a journey with my mother and that was life changing. And I always wished she wished that we do it again or do it, you know, something again, but we couldn't. I mean such mm. a responsibility. You guys were very brave. Yes. Mm. Uh, thank God you had that experience. What a breakthrough. Oh, thank God. Yeah, big time, because it was not fun before that, I'll tell you. And it didn't just all go like that. We still fought and all that, but not in the same way whatsoever. He went back to India and spent a few months with Maharaji uh, the next year and uh, wow. almost lost his business and so on. Oh, my God. But he was yeah. really turned on. So... Um, I'd like to hear, because as I said, to, told everybody, we have never chatted before. We just haven't been able to meet physically. 
I'd just like to know what brought you into the center of this uh, reflective psychedelic experience that everybody has if they're standing in front of one of your paintings. What has brought How you? did you get into that flow from where you were when we were just talking, where you took your first acid trip and so on? What happened? Where, we, where you well, did the sacred mirrors, let's say. Yeah. So for one thing, I'd say that uh, up to the point of the first acid trip, like at the age of 21, I had been training myself as an artist and uh, trying to, you know, learn the tricks of how to depict the outer dimension realistically and things like that, which is a skill that anyone who really wants to can develop. And so uh, that was my primary thing. But along with that, I felt like it was really important to have something to say. And so philosophically, I was very uh, kind of curious about the nature of the self and, and the soul and things like that. And the more I looked in a rational way at what was apparently going on, uh, the less and less uh, faith and hope I felt and the more reason I had, you know, but, the, but uh, I fell into a total despair. So uh, at any rate, I was training my skills. And when the breakthrough with acid came, uh, I was able at least to attempt to depict that first uh, journey. And uh, I mean, the, the latest large painting that I've uh, completed, a little of which is obscured uh, back there, but it's a 10 foot high painting. And uh, it contains wow. what is essentially my first acid trip, the idea of uh, a person being in the dark, but going toward the light. And so uh, I got more or less my first um, marching papers, you know, from, uh, I think I, I did identify it as God, something I did not believe that existed at that point. Uh, but I think that I'm not the only one, I'm not the only atheist to be instantly converted by acid uh, to, oh, I just never looked in this direction. Yeah. I see what you mean. Uh, uh, there's no other way to describe it. And, uh, you know, contact with even something close to that gives the auric uh, radiance. J just, just as the, the miracles that Maharaji would spout out, simply being in the vicinity of a mystical experience is like a cosmic vortex of uh, wonder, awe, and uh, terror and delight and ecstasy and all of it, all at once, infinite, bang. And so uh, with that snap, uh, I instantly got a symbol of uh, this spiral, of what I call the polar unity spiral. I thought I had invented religion, you know, immediately, like every zealot uh, kind of acid <laughs> head. I took acid once and now I understand it all. He was and 21. Yeah. I just wanted to, sir, right. 21. I was 23. And, and uh, so, so that's what happened. So 21 was my first psychedelic painting and it was directly oh, referencing, wow. it was called the polar unity spiral and it was like a religious symbol. It was circular and it uh, went from the dark uh, going in toward the light. And so it also contained all the shades of gray. In that experience, I decided to change my name to gray, that gray oh. was what brought the opposites together. And that was my mission as an artist. All of these things were like kind of transmitted as, this is what you're doing, and this is <laughs> what you'll do for us. You know, and uh, so it was basically like, hey, I've got a reason to live now. <laughs> well, we, and God's well, real. Well, what happened after that? Uh, and <laughs> then, uh, oh, well, of course. Then coming out of the uh, mystical experience, I meet Allison, 
God in the flesh to me. And uh, Well, we, we knew each other, and I knew your work. And I have to say, I was always intrigued by your work. Your work was very deep, and it was about the self. My work was also, at the time, and I believe has always been, in some ways, about the self. And uh, so you were doing some deep and difficult investigations, sometimes heartbreaking and, 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 uh, and, and hard to uh, really... But they were so raw, and they were so authentic. And so I, I watched your work through an entire year of being in this class together, because we were both uh, interested in mixed media performance uh, art. And so, uh, yeah. And then, well, but that was the first time we really got together. Yeah. yeah. And then um, Allison and I kind of bonded, and I was still doing a lot of performance art, and I don't think I really understood how my visions, you know, and I had to have more visions. I had to have more experiences and do a little more study, like scientific study of what's actually going on. Even though I wrote a science report on LSD Cheers. when I was 12. And it was in the newspaper, so we yeah. had the newspaper. <laughs> Alex at 12, <laughs> oh, when, when, get, when LSD was still one. legal. Oh, boy. Yeah, it was 1966 He got a prize for his, like his, his report. <laughs> you know, oh, LSD shows great promise. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. Anyway. In Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so uh, although that uh, context uh, has been maintained, and I and we still, you know, maintain contact with the uh, psychedelic scientific uh, world as well, um, and the and psychedelic psychic world as well. What's the psychedelic psychic well, world? Well, you know, the, the the mind travel, the actual mind travel of psychedelics. Yes, yes. Uh huh. That's what. But I mean. is there a okay? You know, it's not just the scientific world that we're in touch with, it's the actual experience oh, that we're yes, still in touch yeah. with, is what I mean. Uh, I uh, got you. Yes, it's a very vivid experience. Uh, continue, and continues to be. And continues to be a, a, a important uh, touchstone. Uh, yeah, I love the painting that's behind you, though, straight. Yeah, it is amazing. Uh, I'm sorry you yeah. covered up my the piece so much. Here, why don't you push it away a little Let's bit? Let's see. We push got push a it little, away a little bit so you can see a little bit more. Is there a little bit? Yeah. That's better. I mean, yeah. it, it reminds me of yeah, oh, people you. who are just listening to it. You'll have to go to mind, go to beherenownetwork.com slash mindrolling and you'll see the video and this painting. Alex, it's just giving me an impression right now. I'm sorry I wandered off while you were talking. I don't mean that I was not... Not paying no, attention. No, this is a very important uh, piece. I mean, it really... It's like Nataraj to me. That's Nataraj, what I wanted Nataraj, to say. Yeah. Right? Dancing Shiva. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's... Yeah. It's, so. it's a very curious uh, kind of piece. Um, it's called The Great Turn. And uh, it's a... I've never had a painting like this. It's one of the largest paintings I've done. I've, I've been working on it over a year, and it's wow. just completed. It's about eight by 10 feet, and wow. uh, it's highly detailed. Uh, there's a, um, you know, a kind of a tunnel of eyes uh, that, is, that goes from the complete darkness uh, uh, to the light up there at the top. So down at the bottom, it goes into a dark hole. And uh, so there is a being that likewise seems to be aspiring toward a higher dimension uh, of mm -hmm. its own uh, possibility. And uh, in, a, in effect, uh, twisting and lunging toward uh, that higher possibility. At the same time, there seems to be this kind of uh, falling into uh, darkness, falling into the shadow. Uh, that uh, it, it's like we understand the universe to be uh, expanding at, at this uh, it, tremendous direction all at once. It's it's completely the Big Bang is still happening and it's it's expanding. How can it be? I don't understand it. But how is it that we're connected with the forces of complete dissolution and death at the same time that we aspire uh, towards something higher. And uh, so that's the struggle, the existential struggle. Uh, to me, I see three elements. There's a, 
there's a, another element that I hadn't described. You got the tunnel, you got the being, and there is a net. There's a net that's, in this painting, red, white, and blue, filled with jewels. And this being is either struggling and caught in this net uh, uh, and being prevented from uh, going one direction or the other, or it's helping, you know? It's kind of like, you have to decide what's the turning point, what's the great turn for you. Mm, and can, I, can I share something that came up because we gazed at this piece in our last journey and uh, deeply, and I wanted to just say that it, 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 it occurred to us, to me and to Alex, I believe, that, that, uh, that the figure itself was like the body-mind. And the mind was going up into the into the hole, the white hole, the white light, and the body was going down into the dark hole, and it was decaying and kind of as it was going down. So the body is always like kind of on decay, and the mind can be more spiritual and can reach and can go up into the, and then the pool, the we call it the the intervaginating, roiling space in which it lives. You know, it's like the. Uh, the, uh, the the net the jewel net the jewel net is mm -hmm. is the spirit it's the body mind and spirit so the the piece embodies body mind and spirit and the and the natraj is is like embedded like inside of the net like it's like the water or the 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 air that you live in that you don't you just like mm. move in okay if you don't mind can we put the picture of the big painting sure. up that one too oh, yes I mean, yes please of course we yeah because we're talking about this in a way that you got to be yeah no i have to send painting. it to you it's just incredible oh uh, we're trying to get a picture of it that's part of our challenge right now because alex just finished it and it's 10 feet tall by eight feet wide so it's like getting a, the right picture you have you need special equipment so we're working, yeah, right, on, we're working on that, that. picture yeah, yeah. So, Alex, I know that uh, you do practice Buddhism, and am I right? Because, you know, I'm well, getting this from my... Well, I would say my, that uh, the, uh, you know, I studied with, uh, and we studied with uh, Namkai Norbu a number mm -hmm. of years, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, so got a number of transmissions and things from uh, over the years that have been incredibly meaningful to me, and I it seems that I've always had this connection with Padmasambhava, you know, and of course Gautama and all of that, you know, is is incredibly deeply meaningful. But then we found our way into the Dzogchen, uh, you know, kind of uh, community narrative in, in, Conway, of, in Conway, Massachusetts. So it was like driving distance from Brooklyn, and we started to go there. And Alex, you had. Connections in the city too. Yeah, yeah. I, um, for a number of years, used to go to meditation groups in the city, and uh, that were part of the Norbu uh, community. And um, as they got into the uh, Vajra dance, and as I got, uh, as we got into Cosm more and more, I found uh, the basic uh, kind of teaching uh, that was. Uh, being put out in, in the, uh, these very esoteric uh, uh, texts, which I really deeply enjoyed reading, you know, uh, Long Champa is really particularly mm. amazing kind of uh, uh, author, uh, Buddhist author. And t to my mind, you know, it, it really connects with the visionary uh, tradition, but he was so in the non-dual and so able to explain the whole path, you know, and the sense of presence and timeless awareness. And just to kind of almost, his books can, see like, can seem like this uh, poetry of the Dharmakaya. It's just as though the Samantabhadra were kind of mumbling sweet nothings into your ear as you're, you know, you're, embracing in this tantric uh, uh, great perfection, you know? I mean, uh, so Norbu opened up that space for us. He gave us the first kind of, I think, really uh, connection with that. But before we ever met Norbu, I read Norbu's book, 
and I met Padma Sambhava. You know, <laughs> just from reading the book, I had one of the most psychedelic experiences in my life. You know, without you know, on, completely on the net, just having read Padma Sambhava's book, it was like mm. boom. Mm-hmm. You know. You may have been a connected disciple over eons, you know, and... Uh, but even most before that, we studied with the Dalai Lama at Harvard. Yeah. He came what? to Harvard yeah. Theological Seminary, and we got to be in his class, because Alex worked there. So we got two mm. spots in, in his uh, first visit to America. We were there for five days, listening to him talk about the Mahayana Mm. Do you know, you mentioned Dalai Lama, you know, and Long Tempa. I also, I'm, even though, yes, we have this boo, beautiful <laughs> inclusiveness with uh, Buddhism and Bhakti, it's, you know, uh, so uh, His Holiness is translator, probably in that, I've, maybe not quite, maybe it was early, but Tupten Jinpa. Uh, who just wrote a book I, I think about wrote Long Chempa. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's funny because I just wrote to, uh, I think, Shambhala and said, hey, I want to get with uh, Dukten Jimpa G as soon as possible. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, Very I don't. Nice. I haven't read the book. They're just sending it. Yeah, so I just oh. thought... You might be interested. Yes, you thank guys. you very much, Raghu. I would appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know much about him as a as a uh, yogi. I mean, what what a realized being, you know. Good grief! And uh, so, reading the the, uh, the the biographies sometimes of uh, these great yeah. masters is really a, yeah, fantastic. no, really great. Well, what I'm trying to get at though is in relation to your work. Becoming that uh, completely at ease, no subject, object, place, the place of Dzogchen. And then you start manifesting a vision from inside. How do those two things relate, if that's not too... Well, I I think that, you know, if the subject of your work is consciousness, then you've got no choice. You know, you've got to uh, use symbols because, you know, consciousness, it has no smell, it has no color, it has no nothing, you know. It's like all you can do is, like, talk around it. And uh, so the... Uh, one of the cool things that uh, I came across in my uh, reading about art and uh, the different kinds of uh, sacred traditions was in the Christian tradition, they used to call uh, the uh, icons and things like that, the, uh, what was it, the, the, uh, the, the liturgy of, of the illiterate, you know, it was, it was like, how the uh, how the illiterate would become uh, you know uh, introduced to the story, because you could tell the story without having to uh, tell it with words, and and it uh, um, so that kind of uh, magic it made me think of like art theology, you mm. know. Uh-huh. And uh, that that is the the flashpoint between words and pictures, and uh, it, it's very hard to talk about these things. You know, Long Chempa is one of the best at it, but until you've had a taste of that experience, you can't know what he's talking about. And so, uh, to to have those experiences is just like a psychedelic experience then you bring it into the artwork. Then you get the picture. If, if the beings that are showing you all this want you to be able to share it with the world, then they'll do it in such a way that it'll make a deep impression on your soul, like a, you know, a tattoo. And so this is like the skin of your soul. And you're, uh, you got to have that scorching vision. And so mm. you get to share it. 
And hopefully, if you have the right intention, it will be a pure gift, just like it was when it was put into your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to be a medium, you know, uh, of whatever uh, the mystical experience, whatever kind of mystical experience comes through. Because if, if you're able to give a little, uh, you know, uh, energy of that state into the work, like the work behind you, you know, the extraordinary devotional energy that goes into the Tonka uh, works mm -hmm. and things like that is a demonstration. Uh, and when I heard uh, the uh, intention uh, to plant a seed of liberation in the mind stream of the viewer, what higher intention for an artist could there be? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so To make their art a prayer and a meditation. Yeah. And I just have to yeah. say that some people's art is a prayer and a meditation. And um, yeah. I think yeah. that, uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to say anything about being an artist for, for my whole life. And uh, so I just wanted to say that, you know, when you look at the work behind Ragu, especially when your head was covering the Buddha, which is really, you know, <laughs> but in, in the Buddha, where you are the Buddha, and I love that. And there's just <laughs> yeah. all this action. It reminded me of what is behind me which is my painting, most recent mm. larger piece, Chaos. And Chaos and Order and Secret Writing all came out of my psychedelic experience. And mm. uh, the, the chaos representing, well, it's a meditation for me to do it, for one thing. It's mm. an execution of, of meditation. But, uh, and I decided that I wanted to make my painting that, and that would ensure that I would always meditate. So it's very mm. much a... Uh, you know, patience and uh, mindfulness exercise, but it's also about the uh, exploding of and, and movement and constant um, roiling of all things like that's going on around you, all around you, mm. Ragu. Yeah. yeah. What, what about, about uh, maybe you can talk a little bit, Allison, uh, about the jewel net of Indra and that First-hand experience, I'm told. I'd well, love the, to hear about it. The thing about it is that when we were together for a year, we had, we had this uh, very special trip uh, in 1976, June 3rd, where we uh, had our first simultaneous vision. So we, we were tripping, we were lying on the bed, we weren't talking or touching, and Alex envisioned the Universal Mind Lattice and named it the Universal Mind Lattice. And I have always, you know, kind of, called it, called that experience by that name, but the image that came out of that experience for me, and we, we both felt that this was sort of um, the most important thing to make art about, was this sort of uh, experience of the vast vista of fountains and drains of energy that is, you know, the force that is God. So, mm. uh, so this uh, Jewel Net of Indra was the name that I, that I you know, chose for it, stole basically, appropriated from the Hindu, uh, you know, a story of the vast, you know, the, the, the abode of Indra, which has this vast net that goes infinitely in all directions. And at every place where the net crosses, there's a jewel, very much like Alex's portrayal here, a jewel that interreflects all the other jewels in the net. And I just thought mm. that was a beautiful a uh, description of the, the vision of the vast vista of fountains and drains uh, of, of, of roiling energy force that is also known as God. And um, so, but anyway, that was the jewel net of Indra that came out of the same, you know, we, we both felt that, you know, our work should start to focus on these experiences, on portraying these experiences. And for me, uh, my, my, my work is not the person having the experience. It is, for me, the inner experience itself. Just like, you know, it's this vast field. It always was a field. And so I just uh, use the spectrum as a symbol. And I use the color uh, because I'm a symbol maker. I'm an artist. And mm -hmm. uh, so I've selected a shape and... Uh, and, and, a, and a system that has waves and particles. 
it's like quanta of light. I think, you know, I've often felt like we share a similar, actually the same subject, which is transcendental light. Uh, her representation of the transcendental light uh, comes through as uh, this kind of materialization of the, uh, the quanta of, of the spectrum of light. And so on a very micro and macro level, you can see chaos and order as a deeply structural and uh, uh, kind of a system. And uh, so likewise, uh, I did a painting called Universal Mind Lattice that was specifically uh, aimed at portraying the same uh, universal mind lattice, uh, the same experience that uh, she had. and. Um, and it's more like a toroidal uh, fountain, and, but we also felt like drain and uh, a ball of light. And uh, so by portraying this and showing this uh, infinite uh, field, uh, we've been amazed uh, over the years, because it's a part of the Sacred Mirror series, a series which Allison inspired and named uh, many years ago. And uh, so, uh, th this is sort of like the center point of it. And what's interesting about it is I've found numerous cases, uh, both in psychedelic literature and in near-death uh, experiences, and, and just from a lot of personal contact with people who've had what they swear is the same experience. Mm, and yeah. uh, so uh, to me, that's an amazing thing. If you could have a representation of an inner world experience that multiple people say, I've been there, that's a new kind of uh, uh, art. We're confirming or validating a non-representational state of being uh, that is out of this dimension but has been visited by many. And in, you know, the mystical experiences are filled with that kind of thing, and that's what the value of visionary art is, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah, beautifully said. Well, we're, we're near the, uh, the end, but I, I do want you to, both of you, just tell us, I mean, the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors and Entheon, of course, that is what you referred to at the, by uh, the very beginning when we, started chatting here so we uh and i knew we were going to talk about it so i let it go without saying well what is that acronym so here we are right well so, chapel of sacred mirrors is the acronym is cosm and if you want to find out more about cosm which has you know been um you know a small retreat center and workshop place and and place for events and event space for like the last 12 years and closed, you know, to the public since uh, mid March, but still very active, and and uh, and you can you know find out what's going on in the community, and you can see our regular program. So that's how we have continued to outreach. But uh, Entheon, you're doing zooms and stuff. You're, you're getting we have a member circle Zoom once a month, uh -huh. and Cosm.org tells you what's going on. And um, Cosm.tv puts you onto TV. the uh, YouTube uh, channel. You right. know, we're right. growing our subscribers. Working on every full moon will be with people. And, and really, there's just thousands and tens of thousands more people that are getting to come to our programs than were when we were just, you know, mm. on site. And it was a few hundred could fit in here. You know what I mean? So it's been a great mm. way to outreach to people and new way of teaching for Alex and I. And um, so, yeah, we, 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 we just invite you with all of our hearts to, uh, to participate in every possible way that you can find. We have, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have every, every reason to believe that we will reopen. And when we do, Entheon will be a three-story visionary art temple that we want mm. everybody to come and visit us and uh, and we hope that every th everybody's staying safe right now and getting staying well right now so that we can all get together after this has all died down, which we totally, we just, 
here we're so, on so the thriving, same page so thriving Allison. you know what i'm saying just doing the best we can to stick around yeah. hold on everybody hold on everybody stay well yeah. really yeah. And be there uh, when it's over the ram Dass yeah. painting will probably still be there when we open yeah, yeah. we get to right. keep it in the uh, psychedelic reliquary of entheon we have some of alex's greatest portraits of psychedelic uh heroes and uh including the ram Dass painting and uh the the so there's, there's paintings of Dr. Hoffman, Dr. Mm. Shulgin, and Dr. Groff, and also the history of psychedelics, mm. the uh, new elusive. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. What a history. Well, we're looking forward to it, but uh, really we're looking forward to sharing the uh, visionary art movement with sure. the audience that will come to Antheon on the first Especially in the all-one gallery. Yeah. I wanted to tell you that. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Well, well, we're going to have all of this up, as I said, on where the show notes are, on BeHereNowNetwork.com slash MindRolling, and we'll get all of these links. You guys are going to have to help us out. And, oh, there is, uh, I didn't even mention it, and you did. Ram Dass's new memoir just came out, and Being Ram Dass. Being Ram Dass. And, uh, Ram Dass. It's what a what a hug, you know. What a yeah, you know. Yes. You can what still hug. Yeah. still uh, listen to the voice of uh, mm. you know uh, someone who's been uh, a guide all of our lives, and now into the beyond. Mm -hmm. I had a vision mm -hmm. of of Maharaji just yesterday, and you know he was in his blanket and. Mm. And and pulled the blanket away a little bit, and there was round us inside. Peeking out. Yeah. Peeking out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank well, you, that Raghu. was my first moment with uh, with uh, Maharaji. Was as soon as I saw him, I had a, several thoughts which are in you know etched as well, and uh, one of them was. Oh, shit, that's what Ramdas was about. Oh my. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Uh, God, yeah. Um, so, uh, by the way, around the book, being Ramdas, uh, just uh, one little. I sent it to a friend, and I spoke to him later. Um, you know, I gave him a week or so, and I said I figured he'd get through some of it and just say how he liked it and so on. So I said, "How do you like it?" He said, "Well, to be honest, I haven't got past the cover." <laughs> oh God. It's a beautiful and cover. I, I love yeah, that cover. Uh, yeah, has, it become, the, has it become uh, audio book yet? Huh? huh? Has it, is it an audio book yet? Yes, yes it is. is yeah, it really Rameshwar right? Das, who was Ram Das, who this book was written with Ramesh, and, and he, he spent, did. you know, oh, a lot of years going back and forth and hanging out with Ram Das. Without him, this would not have happened. And it's a, he did a beautiful job, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, yes, it's it's available on Audible. It's available so ebook and physical books. He was such and, a good storyteller yeah. that I, you know, I, I think that listening to it is going to be really, really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. Yeah. Well, again, thank, thank you, thank you, thank guys. You, Ragu. Really, thank I'm you so glad much. we finally got here. Right, it took a while, but we got here. Yes, we did. And uh, and we'll have to do this again. Well, thank we'll you. also link up you guys' uh, podcast. So we'll, we're going to. We're going to need some stuff from you, so we're going to get back we to you. We have it for you. We have a whole bunch of people who are just waiting to hear from you what you need, and we'll make it all okay. happen. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so uh, much, Wonderful. Thank, Thank you again. You. This is uh, Mind Rolling on Be Here Now Network. Go to BeHereNowNetwork.com.